Hi, everyone. Welcome to More Than Android Notifications. Uh, my name is Jing Yu. I'm a developer advocate in the partner DevRel team. And I'm Paul Matthews. I'm a partner developer advocate in London. So three years ago on this stage, uh, Chris Wren, an Android engineer on the system UI, um, gave this quote, and it's a brilliant one. Um, don't annoy the user. Respect them, empower them, delight them, connect them to the people they care about. And this is still very much true today. So we're going to look at uh, channels and how you can use them in your app, what's new in notifications, and finally, digital well-being. But first, how to respect your users. So respect your user's attention. Don't annoy the user. Respect them. Some useful tips. Um, so do respect the user's settings. So um, if they've communicated to you in your app that uh, they want a certain setting for your notifications, then you should respect that. Don't try and override it. Don't try and uh, ignore it. You should check that the notifications you're sending are not blocked, that they, they do still want to hear these notifications. And finally, if you're capable in your app, you should back up any settings that they've told you about notifications, and you should make sure that they're synced um, over installs and over devices. You should use well-structured um, notifications in your app, so making use of the, the, the um, styles that we provide, such as messaging style, inbox style, big picture uh, style. And you should make sure that your, your notifications are relevant and timely. A great example is using high-priority FCM messages to ensure that the user gets the notification when you intend them to get your notification. And uh, prioritize posting the notifications first, and then making them look even better, so downloading assets and that kind of thing. Some don'ts, some basic don'ts. Don't just send these notifications, kind of forget about them. So we really want you to, to use the platform features that are there to help you. For instance, auto-cancel, making sure that your notifications disappear when they should. Timeouts. Is a notification really relevant after four hours? Um, and synchronizing across the devices. If you know that your user uses your app on, on multiple devices, like tablets and desktops, you should try and synchronize notifications that they dismiss on one or read on one across others. So don't send notifications that are not actionable. The point of notifications is that they're there to be used. The, the, by definition, the user wants to know something, which means they generally need to do something. So don't send them a notification that just tells them, hey, we sync some stuff in the background. This is not the best use of notifications. And finally, don't annoy the user. So when you send, post a notification to them, you should use alert once and make sure that they're not getting buzzed like crazy as they're standing up on stage presenting about notifications. And you should make sure that the group notification behavior is representative of what you want. So if you're a chat app, maybe children um, group notification behavior, or summary if you're something else. So respect the user. Otherwise, they might just turn off your notifications, and then you've got no way of communicating to them. They might choose to uninstall your app, which would be far worse. And we help. There are some platform um, features that deliberately enable notifications being turned off. For instance, you can see here the a, a notifications being posted, and the user maybe keeps swiping it away. And so now in, in P, we prompt the user, do you really care about this notification? Do you really want to see this content? This acts on channels. So if you're not describing your channels correctly, then this can lead to con some confusion and perhaps some um, lost notifications from the user's perspective. So let's look more about notification channels. They provide granular control to your notifications for the user. So you should empower the user. And clearly, channels are the way to empower them. So let's look at how to use them. Well, first of all, they're now required on all apps as we've, uh, they're required on API 26. And that should be everywhere prevalent now. They help the user categorize so they help you categorize your notifications that help the user to, to interact with them. But more on that soon. And finally, they allow the user to customize the settings. So the user has the final say. So if you think something's important and they don't think it is, they can, they can tell you this. So let's look at the best practices. Again, 
Um, you should allow the users to manage their notifications through the channel creation. You should allow them to maybe deep link into settings to, to change these things. If they're expressing an interest of working with your, your notification channels, perhaps they want to be able to change the, the importance of something. So setting the right importance level for a notification channel seems like an obvious one, but it's so easy to overlook. And finally, user settings. You should respect the user settings, as we said earlier, but back them up where you can, and don't try and abuse them by deleting and recreating. Other don'ts are only using one channel. This is a clear uh, notification smell, if you like. If you've only got one channel in your application, there's probably something else you need to be looking at. If you provide poor descriptions for users so that they don't really understand what the purpose of a channel is, then they're not going to be able to make the best decisions. Or if you use wrong or, or blocked channels, then this is probably, you know, they're trying to communicate to you that, that they don't like this content, and you should respect that. And finally, spamming the user with notification channels is, is just not the best way to proceed. So choosing your channels can really help. Choosing your channels carefully. You really should think of the user when you create your channels not your application, not your architecture. Think of the user and how they might want to interact with your app. For instance, it's a bad idea to try and create notification channels around your importance level that you find important. So, hey, this is a really high priority thing. This isn't what notification channels are for. You should, say, you should group them around you know, categories of, of notifications. For instance, tagging in a photo or liked posts. Let the user communicate back to you how they see that, that type of notification. You should also think about creating notifications when there's more control needed. For instance, if I'm on a chat app and I've got a set general channel for all chat notifications coming in, but then I, I express an interest in controlling like a family chat group, you should, allow, you should create a channel at that point and allow the user to dive deeper and, and have more finely uh, grained control. And finally, lazily creating. So this comes back to not creating too many groups, uh, channels or groups, and that is, you know, if, if Jingyu never receives a, a direct message on, through your app, maybe don't, you don't need to create the, the, group, the channel for that. And then the user can, can provide feedback to you to say, look, this is useful or this isn't useful. And you should listen to that. So in Android P, we added broadcasts for listening in to, um, blocking, to blocking or changing state of your notification channels. You should understand those. And you should react to them. You should maybe back them up so that the next time you create a channel on a different device, it makes sense. And finally, you can you know, query these APIs at runtime also to find out you know, how, how the user interacts with your channels. So now look at what's new in notifications. Thank you, Paul. Um, OK, let's now look at what else is new in notifications on Android 9. So first, we added some viral updates. Uh, to make the notifications easier to read and scan through. As you probably noticed, we added more paddings in the notification, and, went back, uh, and we went back to using the rounded corners at the top and bottom. The other improvement that we really love is this smooth app opening animation that you are seeing here on the slide. Instead of closing the notification and opening the app, now the notification transforms smoothly into the app, which speeds up the transition more than twice. Um, and you might ask, uh, what do you need to do to have this? All you need to do is to make sure that you are uh, starting your activity directly and your activity starts quickly. Since for most users, um, the uh, notification they care about the most are the ones connecting them with the people uh, they care. So we enhanced our messaging style, uh, messaging experience. Um, by adding a new person class um, once you use API 28. Um, and if you're using messaging style in notification, you can see that we have now moved the people's avatar to the left of the notification. And you can set that avatar by using this set icon method. We also added support for images and stickers in the messaging notification. By using set data, you can add image in your messaging notification directly. 
The other feature that I love on Android is direct reply. Um, but sometimes when I'm replying to a notification, I would accidentally tap on the notification, and that will open the app, and my response is lost. But on Android 9, you can help the user with this. Um, by retrieving the draft from this extra, uh, you can populate the response in your app. So make the user experience better, delight them. Um, if you already support Smart Reply in your app, uh, we highly recommend that you use this Set Choices API to also display them in your notification. Instead of replying to the notification, user can now just tap one of them um, and to reply. Okay, here's an example we have for creating messaging style notification using the new APIs. So first, we're gonna create a instance, uh, person instance here. Uh, so we're gonna use the person builder. As you can see, we are setting the name, the URI, the icon for this person. And this is gonna represent the sender in a message. And then we're gonna pass that to this message that we're creating here. As you can see, we're passing the instance of the person, not like before, where we're passing the name of that person. And in this message, we also want to include the image. So we're using the set data method to include that image. And then after that, we're adding this message uh, with another uh, message. So we're adding two messages into this messaging style notification. And then we're setting this style into our notification. OK, so here's a quick summary of some of the do's and don'ts when you're using messaging style. First, please use messaging style for messages. And this also applies for if you're building for Android Auto or, or Android Wear. If you're sending messaging notifications, please use messaging style. In the past, we've seen developers switching between messaging style and some other styles, like big picture style, in order to uh, create that um, big uh, image expansion presentation. But now, with the data method, you don't need to do that. You can just use messaging style, and this will create a consistent experience for the user. And it's always good to add that icon for the people in the notification. So we highly recommend that you use that icon to add that avatar. But if you don't set the icon, we will use the initial of the name for that person to create, the, create that visual presentation. And finally, if your app supports smart reply, uh, please add that into your notification. So you are creating a better experience for the user. And here's a few things that you want to avoid. There are a lot of good reasons to auto-cancel a notification in order to give the user a clean and up-to-date notification jar. But after the user replies to a notification, uh, a messaging notification, this is not one of those cases. You would want to keep that notification there so if user want to return to this conversation and reply afterwards. So please don't cancel that. And let the user swipe away when they're finished with the conversation. The other bad behavior that we've seen in the past is some developers uh, are, using, are, are setting this empty name uh, in order to achieve a viral presentation. Um, but on Android 9, please don't do that. Uh, there are two reasons. One is because it will break on Android 9 uh, on the presentation. And the other, uh, the, and the other reason is because um, a person without a name is not a real person. <laughs> um, so up until now, uh, we will talk about how you can reach the user, uh, how you can help your user connect with people they care about, and how you can make your notification uh, a better experience for the user. But I want to hit a, stop, uh, hit a pause here and look at app usage from the other side. Since as much as I want to get that notification from my friend and family, I still need time away from the device. So to help users with this, we announced the digital well-being at I.O. this year. If you have a Pixel device running uh, Android 9, I highly recommend that you download it from the Play Store uh, and sign up for beta. So this is what digital well-being will show us. It provides an overview of our app usage and provides a da dashboard that shows um, our time spending on each app and the number of notifications that we received. 
Um, I've personally loved using digital well-being to learn that where I'm spending my time, but sometimes I would find that one or two apps are sending me a lot of notifications unexpectedly. So one question you might have is, how are these notifications counted? Since this is still in beta, the counting method may change, but the goal is to track user interruption, interruptions. So in general, any newly created notifications are counted as one, and in any updates that's visible to the user are also counted as one, which means if you're sending a notification to the block channel, that is not counted here. So in this case, I saw this app is sending me lots of notifications. So I got curious. Uh, I went into the dashboard, and I opened that um, to see the overlay breakdown. And as you can see here, I got notifications every hour that day. And even at 4 AM in the morning, I got eight notifications. So if these notifications are high importance, I would be woken up in the middle of the night. But thankfully, that's not the case. Um, but if these notifications are push notifications, and they are sent using high-priority FCM message, which means this app is constantly waking up a deep dose device. If I want to have good battery in the morning, I might just uninstall this app. But for now, um, I will turn on DND, do not disturb, so that I don't get disturbed. Digital well-being also provides ways for users to um, disconnect and reduce interruption. And on Pixel 3, you can even turn on DND by simply flip your device, which is super convenient. But uh, what if this is a super important uh, notification that the uh, user actually wants to receive? So for those, uh, here's a few advice for you. First, set the right category to your notification. As we can see here in the Do Not Disturb setting, user can choose what to block and what to allow. And they can set exceptions on calls, messages, reminders, and events. If your notification belongs to one of them, please tag your notification as such. Here, I listed a few categories which correspond to these exceptions on the other side. As I said, if your notification belongs to one of these categories, please let us know by tagging them. The other advice that we have is, if this is a notification coming from another uh, person, then please tag your notification. As you can see here in the, digital, uh, in the Do Not Disturb setting, user can choose who they want to get a notified from, from their contacts. So please add that person in your notification, and. Um, Associate and add the associated URI if possible. Doing this will allow you to bypass Do Not Disturb. But you should always remember that when users turn on Do Not Disturb, they really don't want to be disturbed. So if you're sending a notification that's not expected, that will really annoy them. So please don't abuse these APIs. Which this brings us back to the quote we had at the beginning, where we're saying, Whenever you're sending a notification, please keep this in mind. Don't annoy the user. Respect them, empower them, delight them, and connect them to the people they care about. Thank you.